Getting boat jobs done has proven a little bit difficult over the last three or four days because it's been peeing down constantly. And if this rain doesn't stop soon, then some of these boats won't need lifting back in the water, they'll just float out by themselves. Now we've got the floor removed from the forward sail locker, we get access to our bow thruster battery and the bow thruster motor. But the first thing to do here right now is for Angie to get in clean uh, and get rid of all the mould and the dirt and there's a bit of scummy water down at the bottom there. Um, so Angie's going to get here and clean and I'm going to tackle another dirty job. I'm going to the uh, aft day head to see if I can remove the outflow pipe. Um, because I'm pretty sure that that's going to be uh, have a lot of calcium build up inside and I want to get that out now while we're on the hard and give it a, a good bashing on the concrete. Going in. <laughs> This white pipe right here is the outflow from the aft head and it passes underneath here and through into the base of the vanity cabinet. Then it comes up here, does a loop and finally exits the boat through this seacock here. So we've got to get the hose off here first. I think that's going to be the biggest challenge and see how it goes. I've just spent a very sweaty and smelly two hours getting this pipe disconnected from the head and passed through the uh, side of the under sink cabinet. Now having a look inside the hose um, it is actually in very good nick uh, considering um, I've seen a lot worse on some YouTube videos with the calc really really reducing the diameter of the hose so for the age and the usage it's actually quite good we could have left it on uh, but the thing is, you don't know unless you take it off, and we have taken it off, and I had to cut this end off because even though it was spinning on the uh, on the seacock, I just couldn't get any uh, force on it to remove it in the position it was in, so I've cut it off and I'll remove the remainder from the seacock uh, later. Now all the heavy grunt work has been done in this aft head, it's time for the cleanup crew to go in. There was a little bit of spillage. <laughs> Uh, look, it's not a big deal. It's just, you know, clear water, doesn't smell. I'm onto it with gloves. <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> Dirty that at your peril. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. A brand spanking, sparkly, shiny, nice smelling head. And all we're going to do now is get a replacement hose and connect it up. And that'll be that job ticked off the list. <laughs> Yay! A brilliant works on rust stains. There have been rust stains on there since we bought the boat yep. that have I've used everything on. Yeah. And uh, this stuff got it off in like two seconds. They, actually, Heinz did mention that we'd be super impressed with yeah. uh, the rust stains. And I was thinking about the ones on the deck. Um, mm. So we'll give that yeah. a go on our yeah. final clean. Yeah. Right now, though, the wind is picking up and we've got too many things out on deck which can easily blow away. So I think it's time to button down the hatches and go and do some research about replacement hoses. And make dinner. That's and make dinner. Thing. Guess who's doing which. <laughs> and we'll be back again tomorrow for more fun and cleaning <laughs> and taking things apart and swearing. <laughs> anyway, toodles! Toodles! While I've been battling away in the aft day head, Ansha has done a superb job of cleaning this forward sail locker. You can actually smell the cleanliness in here now and it looks absolutely fabulous. Now one of the things I wanted to do while we had the floor up was to see if I could drop the bow thruster and take it out of its tube so I can give it a thorough clean and just check everything is good here. And one of the things that's associated with the bow thruster is this forward battery. So I've come to test it. Let's see what sort of condition it's in. I'm not sure whether it gets charged from shore power or whether it only gets charged when the 
uh, engine is running. So let's take a look. Uh oh, 1.71 volts. I would say that suggests that this battery is cactus. Luckily we do still have one spare battery that was good when we had to swap out the dead batteries in October of last year. So we'll dig that out and take a look at the voltage of that and swap it out for this one. I'm, I'm pretty confident that it's going to be still around about 12 to 13 volts. Our bow thruster is an important bit of kit and I always have it um, engaged at the helm ready for use whenever we're coming into a fuel station or a berth or an anchorage and I always have a challenge with myself to see whether I'm going to actually need to use it or not so that's the game but when we do need to use it I want to know it's working fine so I've checked it all inside the forward sail locker and it all looks good uh, it'll work even better when we get the new battery in there and I'm just going to change out this uh, this anode now it still looks good when you compare it to a brand new one but the thing is, it's a little bit difficult to get out when it's in the water, so I might as well do it now, as this thing is uh, 9 euros, so easier to do it now. Removing the old anode is fairly easy, just take this bolt out at the bottom, pull that out, and theoretically the anode should just drop away. I think we're going to have to get something to lever that out. I think a big screwdriver will do it. Yep, a bit of a touch with the big screwdriver and away she drops. We'll clean up this surface here so we make sure we've got a good contact and uh, replace that. And there we go, a bright new shiny anode protecting the inner metals of the bow thruster. And there uh, you can see the new one alongside the old one. It's great to be back on board ABC and we've had a few days of rain since we moved on board but today we woke up to sunshine which was great and I made the most of the sunshine and went back over to the little studio apartment which is 50 metres away where we were staying and I've brought back all of my crafting things, my things for jewellery and resin, new resin kits and um, I've got a problem now. Because I've had a few deliveries from Amazon and I've also collected lots of shells and pebbles from the beach, I don't know where to put it all. Look, all of this has got to fit in to there. How's that going to happen? <laughs> I think it's going to take me the whole afternoon to work that one out. Well, I did it. I had to reshuffle a few things, but I got everything away. Look. I had to put my Dremel drill bits and travel easel into the bottom of the wardrobe and stack my shoes up in one corner. <laughs> but it all fits really well, so I'm very pleased with that. If you like this video give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and ding the bell so that you get notified of future video updates. Hey Baz, the courier's been. I've just found a couple of things in the office. Well it's kind of exciting and it's also kind of disappointing. I'll go through each thing individually. This is the uh, outflow sanitation hose for the aft head and we ordered two meters of this, I think it's a 38 mil or 35 mil uh, diameter hose and we also ordered one meter of a 25 millimeter hose and as I looked at the parcel I thought maybe they'd been clever and had stowed the smaller hose inside the bigger hose but nope there's nothing in there except fresh air so I'm going to have to get on to the guys and say hey you know I paid for the one meter of 25 mil hose where is that please send it to me the other thing that arrived is this it is a galvanic isolator and this connects to the earth connection on the shore power side of things so I'll talk more about that when we are installing that but I'm glad that's arrived that's going to be very important for when we are tied up uh, to shore power on marinas. Uh, yesterday something else arrived this beautiful shiny concoction is a cutlass bearing now this does of course mean that we can move on with a lot of jobs and now I'll just take this opportunity to go outside while it stopped raining 
because it's been peeing down for the last three days solid and tell you how this is going to allow us to move forward with some other jobs. This new cutlass bearing lives inside here and so we'll have to tap the old one out and in order to do that we've first of all got to remove the prop shaft completely. So the sacrificial anode has got to be taken off. Inside at the other end of the prop shaft we've got to take off the key and we'll have to do that from inside I think. Then we'll pull the whole prop shaft out completely. Somehow manage to persuade this old cutlass bearing to pop out and replace it with the new one. Then we can put the prop shaft back into place reattach the key inside, reattach the end of the prop shaft into the flange, reattach the flange to the gearbox. Oh, and while we're in there, we'll also be putting on the new stern gland. That then will be this whole section completed once we've got the anode back on. And then we can reattach the air intake, turbo and exhaust system to the engine block itself. And that will be a major move forward in our boat projects. It's just after seven in the morning and I've just got up to go to the loo. Uh, there's a light drizzle falling and I've just looked at the apartment building and the boat here and I'm not sure what kind of birds these are. It looks like little swallows or swifts but they're all over the building on every ledge like a little bird invasion. Yeah, definitely some sort of swift or swallow because they've got a forked tail. I feel sorry for this poor bloke in his boat. Bet he has to clean up a lot of bird poo.